Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sharad Balaji here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's discuss about a child who is a known weezer but a recent onset poor control, breathlessness and tachypnea. What is this case? Let's see. This 8 year old obese boy who is a known case of asthma on inhaled corticosteroids referred to, the, to our team for recent loss of poor control. What is it actually? On inhaled corticosteroid, recent onset poor control, obese boy. Is that poor control is due to obesity? Let's see. So the issue is progressive breathlessness. Look at this, progressive breathlessness for the past two months without any constitutional symptoms, fever, weight loss, nothing, just tachypnea. He was on inhaled corticosteroids despite that progressive breathlessness, not responding to inhaler therapy. What is the approach? First of all, let's find out whether is this a case of asthma. To say asthma, you need to have a nocturnal cough, dry cough, response to bronchodilator, trigger induced. That trigger can be season, emotion, exercise, environment. Very rarely it can be due to food. Whether all these findings were present in the child? Yes, it was. Seven to eight months back, all these symptoms were present. Even though spirometry, they didn't do. Symptomatology fits into a case of asthma. So, the child was started on inhaled corticosteroids. But what is the issue? Recently, there is increasing breathlessness without any cough. To say asthma, you need to have cough and breathlessness. When you say breathlessness without cough, it is unlikely to be due to asthma. Because asthma is a disease of bronchitis. Bronchus is the place where cough receptors are abundant along with the trachea. So you can diagnose asthma with cough as a predominant complaint without breathlessness. But you can't diagnose a case of breathlessness as asthma without cough. But here all symptoms and signs of asthma were present. Started on inhaled corticosteroids, now not responding, not responding in the form of increasing breathlessness without much cough. His saturation turned out to be very, very, very low. So, cyanosis on examination itself, there was central and peripheral cyanosis. Lips were blue, but he's comfortable. He was answering to all my questions. He's a markedly obese fellow like me. So what is the obvious thing that is that is there on examination? Marked obesity along with central cyanosis obvious to the naked eye. So whenever you have a cyanosis involving lips, it means the saturation is less than 80%. I had a doubt whether my eyes are, were correct or not. It was checked once, twice, thrice, four times with finger pulse oximeter, other advanced pulse oximeter, all turned out to be very, 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 very low. But luckily, with just two liter of oxygen, the saturation was improved. Examination did not reveal anything. Air entry was equal. Minimal V's was present. I was surprised. Is it a case of acute severe asthma exacerbation? Shall I start salbutamol, ipravent, magnesium sulfate, steroid, terbutalin? Is it a case of life-threatening asthma? To say life-threatening asthma or severe asthma exacerbation, you can have this hypoxia. Agreed. You need to have this tachypnea. Agreed. Minimal VCS, yes, it can be a silent chest. But silent chest, air entry should be less. Here air entry is equal. And what will happen to this life-threatening asthma exacerbation presenting with a hypoxia of 70? Can it, can it have a normal sensorium? Less likely. As I told you already, he was conversing with me, 8-year-old boy. So, sensorium is normal. Our entry was there. The child was comfortable despite hypoxia, no cough. So, 
the team decided not to treat that case as a case of acute severe asthma exacerbation. So we did not start any of these drugs. So what, why, why, the, why it is due to, is it cardiac, pulmonary, hematologic or any cardiopulmonary? To say cardiac, any murmur, any all four limb pulses was present, any S2 abnormality, nothing. Absolutely he was fine so far, so less likely to be cardiac. Can it be pulmonary? Most in favor of pulmonary. Why? Because saturation improves with oxygen dramatically. If it is a cardiac case, less likely. If it is a AV malformation involving pulmonary vessel, less likely to have this dramatic increase, increase of saturation. With hemoglobin, no such history. No such history. We didn't plan for uh, your advanced ABG analysis to look for that carboxyhemoglobin. We didn't plan. So, it is a case of pulmonary issue. So, where, where that pulmonary issue comes from? Old investigation revealed IgE, his CBC is normal, IgE is very high. Again, suggest you of, in this context of asthma, again, suggest you of allergy disease. Echo was taken, turned out to be normal. X-ray bilateral upper lobe infiltrates, darts and commas. Okay. So, what is this? It is pulmonary because of breathlessness, improves with oxygen and uh, silent tachypnea, known case of asthma, more in favor of pulmonary rather than thinking about other causes. How to approach a case of breathlessness? This is mainly meant for first year postgraduates. How to approach a case of breathlessness? When you have a case of breathlessness, if there is an audible noisy breathing in the absence of cough, then it is probably nasopharynx or lar of, uh, larynx, strider or snoring. If audible noisy breathing is not present, but there is predominant cough means it arises from trachea or bronchus. Probably an yeah, asthmatic episode. If you have tachypnea, if you have tachypnea without much of cough, without much of noisy breathing, then you need to think in terms of alveolar or interstitial pathology. Alveolar pathology means pneumonia, acute pneumonia, alveolar exudate. But history did not suggest you of any high grade fever, acute non-set, x-ray did not suggest you of any air bronchogram. So probably is it a case of interstitial? The answer is yes, it is inst interstitial because it is slowly progressive silent tachypnea with desaturation and improving with the 2 liter oxygen. How to approach a case of difficult asthma? First of all, whenever with poor control, whenever any case of asthma comes with poor control, not responding to medication, just ask whether is it a case of asthma, whether the purpose of starting inhaled corticosteroids is correct. Here, it was trigger induced, recurrent breathlessness. Initially, there was a response. So, all fine, well and good. The child was a known case of asthma. So, the purpose of starting inhaled corticosteroids were correct. But, correct, but is lost control. Why? Whether the technique good, dosage is good, adequate, compliance is good, everything was checked, turned out to be normal. Associated comorbid, yes, allergic rhinitis, everything can cause. But how can I explain this hypoxia with this allergic rhinitis, allergic conjunctivitis and adina? I can't explain. Obesity can produce an interstitial, not interstitial, restrictive lung disease. But how can I explain that? with this hypoxia. So, obesity can cause, but this hypoxia improving with oxygen less likely to be restrictive lung disease due to obesity. So, we probed further. So, everything was correct. Step 1, is it asthma? Yes, but poor control, technique correct, not much comorbids. When we asked, he told breathlessness was more in the evening time compared to morning time. When we asked breathlessness more in the evening time only, no, no, breathlessness was there throughout day and night time, but more during night time, more during when he goes to school, college, school, goes to home, okay. When we asked what was there at home, look at this, pigeons. Plenty of pigeons. Our grandmother recently started raising pigeons and started to sell them. 
for the past six months. Is this pigeon can be responsible for this tachypnea? Yes, you all know. Pigeon droppings when we inhale can incite a hypersensitive pneumonitis leading to interstitial lung disease. So the fourth question is you need to ask exposure history. Not only pigeons, many can cause but kindly ask in particular about pigeons. Even if there is, there are no pigeons or no indoor or outdoor animal exposure, then you need to do a ball or sputum cytology to look for whether it is a neutrophilic asthma or eosinophilic asthma. If it is a eosinophilic asthma, I will consider in terms of a monoclonal antibody. If it is a neutrophilic asthma, you can try macrolides or theophilans. So, here the problem is in step 4. Problem is in step 4. So we took, so we considered it as a case of hypersensitive pneumonitis based on the clinical backgrounds, x-ray a little bit of clue, clinical background. So we took CT, CT reveal extensive ground glassing throughout all fields, okay, more in favor of an interstitial lung disease or hypersensitive pneumonitis. So radiology was, suggest, was also suggestive of hypersensitive pneumonitis. But we need to prove that radiology is in favor of hypersensitive pneumonitis. PG on exposure is there. How can I correlate? We did bronchoscopic lavage. Lavage plenty of lymphocytes there and in blood we did serum specific IgG specific for PG and proteins. And it is two times the normal value. So by blood test, by clinical parameters and by CT our diagnosis was hypersensitive pneumonitis but for an undergraduate it is called as birth fancier's lung or otherwise known as pigeon breeder's lung right so what is the treatment which one is responsible for that remove that allergen and the child was started on oral steroids for about eight weeks tapered and withdrawn and he was continued not inhaled corticosteroids because he is a known case of asthma Right now, the child has been doing well and he is advised not to go to her grandmother's home till all those PGNs were not there. Okay. So, there are many cases reported. So, this is a case of an often an under-recognized condition. Whenever you have a silent tachypnea, when cardiac function is normal, hemoglobin is normal and no noisy breathing, no cough, kindly think Think in terms of an interstitial pathology. Ask for exposure issues. Okay. As I told you, this is a case of hypersensitive pneumonitis. And you need to suspect. When you need to suspect this hypersensitive pneumonitis. So, cough plus or minus. Often on and off tachypnea or progressive tachypnea. When you auscultate, crepitations will be there. Wheeze will be there. On oxygen, hypoxia will be there. And oxygen... On oxygenation, saturation will improve. The steroids will improve. Because of this recurrent cough, breathlessness and crepitation, you could think in and lung infiltrates here and there, you could think in terms of a recurrent pneumonia. Or because of recurrent cough, wheeze, breathlessness, hypoxia, nebulization with steroid, you could think in terms of a wheeze exacerbation. But why the child had improved each and every time? Is it because of your oxygen? Is it because of your steroid? Is it because of your antibiotic? No. Whenever he got worsen, he comes to hospital and he was he is away from this antigen or allergen exposure. That was the reason for the improvement of his general condition of hypoxia. Not because of your steroids, not because of your antibiotics, not because of your oxygen but it can contribute but the main contributor is he is away from the antigen that causes all these issues so this is so it can mimic recurrent pneumonia it can mimic recurrent wheeze but here in pneumonia significant fever tachypnea in v in asthma exacerbation significant cough breathlessness wheeze but here silent recurrent tachypnea Hypoxia is very severe, improves with oxygen. Okay, your CBC will not reveal anything.
Okay, your X-ray will not reveal anything. You need to go for a CT chest if your diagnosis is in, in favor of an hypersensitive pneumonitis. So what is the carry home message? Always ask in a progressive tachypnea, improves with oxygen, always ask exposure issues, significant exposure is to it can be a biofuel, it can be a construction work, you all know that there are so many cases of hypersensitive pneumonitis after twin tower destruction, so many cases, so a construction issue can predispose your biofuel can predispose your agarbati sambran everything can predispose passive smoking cat cockroach okay it can be an organic or it can be an inorganic it can be an indoor or it can be an outdoor allergen exposure matters finally what is the carry home i need to thank my fellow for using this phrase what is this pgn not always brings peace situation changes situation changes okay so you need to be aware of that slowly progressive tachypnea hypoxia with or without clubbing improves with oxygen think in terms of an hypersensitive pneumonitis bird fat cells lung or pgn breeders lung and pgn exposure should be asked in all cases of interstitial lung disease bye bye